Welcome friends to another r slash pro revenge video. Today we got a great story of revenge where OP takes their ex bosses promotion they had lined up. But first a story from whatever 43264 I guessed. Yeah, I'll take your shift. This was years ago. I was 16 working my first job at a pizza shop that had a whole thing based off of hot and ready pizzas. Yeah, that one. This was hands down the worst job I've ever had. Between crappy customers, God forbid they have to wait 5 minutes for a pepperoni pizza at 6pm on a Friday because we sold all of our ready pizzas, the even worse staff, we were also understaffed, we had 12 people total working there and needed like 4-5 to five people per shift with 2-3 to three shifts per day, and the lack of a management system. I only worked there for 3 months. In short, I was never bullied in school, but I was bullied by my coworkers at this job. I don't know if it's because I was the youngest and they were all 18 to 24. I don't know, not my problem. They were all terrible to me, such as putting their tasks onto me because they didn't want to do it. I basically ran that shop at one point, leaving me to carry the heavy boxes of dough from the basement while they only carried toppings, forcing me to deal with the most difficult customers. They often referred to me as management despite being the youngest on there and not a manager and blame me for not doing tasks when the district manager would come to the store. Our store manager quit. Maybe he got fired, I don't know, like a month in, and they never replaced her. After three months of a toxic workplace and working every holiday from Halloween to New Year's and my entire winter break, I put in my two weeks. Realized I was 16 and way too young to be miserable at my job, so the schedule comes out, and the one guy who was especially nasty to me realized I wasn't on the following week. He was like, darn, they really cut your hours. And I was like, no, I put in my two weeks. He smiles so big and then immediately tries to hide it. I then hear him go into the back and high five the other cook after telling him that I quit. Maybe an hour later, he gets a text and realizes that he was supposed to go to a family event or something on a Saturday he has to work all day. Again, we don't have a store manager. So the rule of thumb to get coverage was just ask the person and write their name on top of yours on the schedule in the office. No one's covering his shift, everyone's busy. So I offer to. I tell them I needed an extra bit of money anyways, even though I wasn't supposed to work that week. And my next job doesn't start until the week after. He's so excited. The day comes and I just don't go. I don't know what happened. I don't care who I screwed over in the store. I don't care if he got in trouble. I just left it at that. After what that place put me through for three months, it was the least I could do for a peace of mind. If you worked at a place like this with a bunch of coworkers who were totally ungrateful, walked all over you, and you were on your way out with two weeks, would you want to screw them on your way out too? Leave them with something to remember you by? Or would you rather just drop it and leave that in the past? Let me know what you would do in the comments down below. Our next story is from Jesse Lynx. I flipped off a class of elementary schoolers. So back when I had a motorized bike, I was just cruising through this upper class neighborhood minding my own business. The road I was on went right by this elementary school and right on the other side of the fence there's a playground for the school. As I'm riding by, I hear shouting from the kids and get pelted with rocks. It didn't really hurt, but the little craps irritated me. I looped around the neighborhood and rode past the school again just to see if they would do it again. Sure enough, I got pelted with rocks and the kids were shouting words they shouldn't know at that age. They looked about third grade. Anyway, I swing around again and as this time I'm coming up, I can see the group of kids all lined up with the rocks in their hands, ready for me. As I pass them, I flip the bird at them all and I didn't get hit with a single rock. All the kids were shocked I would do such a thing. I specifically remember this little girl's jaw dropped in utter shock. I regret nothing. I don't know what's wrong with these kids, but they're growing up all kinds of wrong, standing there pelting passerbys with rocks. I had a situation growing up in school where cars were driving by. I didn't throw rocks at them. I could be a little bit of a jerk to my classmates though. Our next story is from Lemon B 90 Ask us to tone it down? Okay, I'll clap even harder. I went to my mom's graduation yesterday. It was a large ceremony with all of the graduate students receiving degrees across the university. It was held in the basketball stadium. Lots of people, really loud, etc. I was with a group of four people, two of them being my siblings. Before the ceremony formally began, we were talking, like normal people, about mom and her degree, etc. 
I don't think we were particularly loud, and anyway, the whole stadium was loud. The graduates hadn't entered, and they hadn't played the national anthem. This older woman in the row in front of us turns and says to my brother in a really rude tone, Can you tone it down, please? My brother, who's a really gentle guy and very unobtrusive, who had just been talking about how he was happy for his mom finally getting her PhD, looked super embarrassed. My older sister was indignant. I, the middle child, was petty. You tell my baby brother to shut up when your whole group is still talking? Oh, heck no. Do you know how many times you clap at one of these things? Probably close to 50 times. I normally don't clap very hard. I have arthritis in my hands and clapping a lot or super hard makes them hurt, tingle, etc. So I typically do a white lady tennis clap. I was right behind this woman in tiny stadium seating. Every time it came for applause, I clapped so darn hard. Hands cupped, my chicken wing arms pumping. Really loud, old man, encore please, best darn joke I ever heard in my life claps right behind her head. I made sure I didn't clap the longest, but almost. After the first few, my hands started to tingle and ache, but my mama didn't raise a quitter. I think halfway through the ceremony, she realized what was happening. She talked to the person next to her and gestured towards me, so I stopped for about 10 minutes, letting some thunderous applause go by with only a few polite claps, only to start up again even harder. And you bet when mom was on stage, I was screaming and hootering and hollering. Are my hands sore today? Yes, but if I knew where the lady lived, I'd go clap outside her bedroom window. I just don't understand where this lady's trying to get off trying to tell people to stop talking. And you're in stadium seating. Like, if there's ever going to be a place where there's talking, it's going to be an open stadium. This ain't the movie theater, Karen. Stop your whining and turn back around and save your poor spine. Our next story is from Alligator5432. Keep me up all night? Fine, we're all waking up early. I live in an apartment building on the ground floor. I have a corner unit, so I share one wall with one unit, my upstairs neighbors. The unit above me has a constant stream of subletters that cycle in and out about once a month. The current occupants are a nightmare. They party and scream and stomp around until 2 to 3 a.m. multiple times a week. After the first few nights of this, I hit a breaking point and decided all of our butts are waking up early. I try to keep my home workouts quiet, using headphones and staying away from my noisier equipment until the afternoon. But my 5 a.m. alarm now is the bullhorn hooked to my beat speaker. My music is now boosted bass dubstep and my loud bike trainer is my warm-up. Enjoy the hangover, jerks. I'm just thinking of that darn video of that lady with the pans in the hallway, singing the lovely tune of Ain't Get No Sleep Cause of Y'all. If your apartment neighbor has no consideration for keeping it down, they're gonna party all night, then you can party all morning too with OP. Wake up and get that workout in. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Every single video has great stories, like our next one from Motor City Wings 20, Narcissistic workers slandered me to get bonus points from the boss when I first started and really hurt my reputation, so I did the same. A coworker really hurt my reputation by telling my boss and my coworkers that I had no work ethic and I just lug around and I don't do much, despite actually really working pretty hard. He did this a lot to the point where I had to work my butt off beyond belief to the point that my bosses had to notice so that I could keep my job. After this held up for a while, this tool actually printed an email he sent to my boss expecting me to give him praise saying that I improved my work ethic, despite discrediting me working my butt off on a daily basis. He's always been into power and praise, so he's tried to get into policing and firefighting for years, but never gotten in. Him slandering me costed me promotions and securing a full-time position and ultimately scarred my reputation. I believe that he just thought I was an easy target because I was new and he had nothing to lose from crab talking me. He finally got a volunteer job in firefighting. He's going around boasting that he's a firefighter and carries his walkie talkie around off duty and despite being there for like a couple months, says he's going to be hired full time. What are the odds that several of my friend's dads are longtime firefighters at the hall he works out of? I ask them if they know my coworker and of course they do. How much they must love him given that he says he'll be full time in a month 
and the one time they printed off an email he gave to my boss, telling him I really improved my work ethic. They all think he's a tool, and they don't know where he got the idea they'll be hiring him. Be careful who you target at work, buddy. You gotta admit, the world is a small world indeed sometimes, and somebody you might pick on might have some serious connections that you're just not aware about. I wouldn't say that this should serve as a lesson as to why they should treat people with respect. Obviously, just regardless, they should treat people with respect and treat people the way they deserve without bias, without trying to throw somebody under the bus and bully them really for no reason. Like, what is the point of calling OP lazy or having no work ethic and just lugging around? Are they just doing it to try to make themselves look better in comparison to supposedly not doing much at all? Our next story is from Chadgar. Honking me to get in the car faster? Now wait. About 10 years ago, I went out to lunch with a coworker. When we were done with lunch and getting back into his car, he asked me to wait a second before getting in so he could shuffle some things around. I had the door open and was standing in an open parking spot. As he was doing this, a car drove up to the spot and immediately honked at me and motioned for me to get out of the way. That rubbed me the wrong way because it's not like I was just standing there for fun. It should have been obvious I was about to get in the car, but to just honk without even waiting a second or two to see what was going on? Screw you. About five seconds later, he had cleared whatever needed to be cleared and told me I could get in, but I told him to wait. I stood in the open parking space and stared at the driver. She honked and honked. I just stood there. After about a minute of this, she admitted defeat and went to go park somewhere else. As she did... I got in the car and we drove off. The spot she ended up with was more cramped and further away. All she had to do was give me a few seconds to get in the car, but no, she had to get aggressive right away. Oh well, I hope you enjoyed waiting extra and getting a crappy space on top of it. Yeah, I don't know who this lady was, but you're not going to inspire too many people to want to help you out. You're going to roll up to the parking spot. Just waiting there is already kind of a little irritating. But to sit there and keep honking and honking, I'd want to go and sit down in that car, put the seat back, kick my feet up. Maybe I'll take a quick five minute siesta and just really take in the nice, peaceful sounds of honk, 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 honk. Our next story is from Zellas. Check, please. This is not a new type of story, but wanted to share it nonetheless. I'm sure some of you have been in my shoes. On this glorious day, my friends and I decided to get together and go out to dinner. We were away from home for months, working, and it was one of those, we're all off tonight, let's go out moments. This group was maybe 8-10 to people, I can't remember exactly how many. All really good friends, the type you trust and vibe with. Surprisingly, everyone decided to go to Outback Steakhouse. It was close and they said the food's not terribly bad, no big deal. We were out to release some stress, laugh a lot, eat and drink. Everyone that's worked the service industry knows how large groups can get. I've worked the service industry as a waiter in the past, so I know how rough things can be. However, I was with a good crew and I had no concerns with things getting out of hand. It was maybe 8pm. We were immediately seated because someone had called to let the restaurant know we were a decent sized crew. We waited and waited and waited for the waitress. I'd say a solid 10 minutes. I walk up to the hostess and say, Hey, we've been waiting for our waiter or waitress. Can you please send someone over? Five more minutes our waitress comes. Y'all ready to order? At this point we're all like, cool, no big deal. Let's order some food and have a good time. I tell the waitress, at the end, please bring me one check. I'll take care of it. Because like I said, Anything I can do to help a waiter or waitress, I'll do. I've been there. I know how that can make or break a long night. Not because anyone at the table wasn't financially able to, but usually one person pays the bill and others either drop cash to the payer or they got me tomorrow. Whatever, we'll easily figure it out. But usually one person pays for the sake of helping the waitress out. We order appetizers and drinks. Ten minutes go by. No waitress, no drinks. The appetizers arrive, some of them, and our waitress is nowhere to be found. Now things are starting to go downhill in terms of expectations and a good dining experience. Our waitress comes back smelling like, I'd say the distinct smell of a green leafy substance that may or may not be illegal in some states, aka marijuana. No big deal, you do you boo, I'm not judging, but I'm getting annoyed. 
The drink orders are wrong, they're taking forever, the whole nine yards. Some people still don't have apps, you get it. At this point I suggest to everyone we order everything at once. However many drinks you think you'll want, main course, dessert, we need to ensure we get food sometime before Christmas. This way the waitress at least puts them in the system and we hopefully get our food and drinks at once. The food and drinks take forever to arrive. Surprisingly the food orders were correct, however we were still missing some appetizers and drinks. We eat, continue to have a good time and so forth. When the waitress brought the check, I told the waitress I was no longer paying the check and she needed to bring separate checks. She said, how many ways should I split the check? And one of my female friends responded, oh no boo boo, we all need separate checks tonight. At this point everyone still had drinks and dessert, so it was game the freak on. I got my check back and said I never got my appetizer, yet it's on my check. She ran off and came back with a new check. I said you charged me for three drinks, I only received two. New check. I said my friend over here never received his drink or appetizer but they're on his check. He needs another check. New check. I said excuse me my girlfriend, my friend but she played along, has the wrong check. You mixed up her appetizer with someone else's, everything else is correct. Two new checks. And every time she came back there was something that required a new check. This went on until some of the staff were literally walking out while we were still there, drinking, eating, and waiting for our check. We could have went on all night, but had to call it a night. But not before asking for some change for a $100 bill, because someone decided to pay with cash for their check. I could have just paid one check, but screw that. Blood had to be shed. Listen, I'm not gonna lie, like, I'm not a very big judgmental person. If you're gonna go and, you know, smoke a little of the green leafy substance while you're on the clock, it doesn't really bother me, as long as it's not affecting my service. But yeah, if I'm sitting there waiting 10 plus minutes each time I order or wait for you, and then you're getting the order wrong on top of that and the bill's wrong, then I'm gonna be livid and also I'm gonna be pretty incentivized to give no tip. If you had a waiter or waitress do this bad, do you think it's ethical to not give a tip or do you think you should always give some kind of tip? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. This next story is from Acceptable Site. Two can play this game. This is not the most petty I've ever been, but it is the most recent as it's happening right now. A mildly annoying thing that my husband will do is if he goes to bed before me is clear off his side of the bed and anything that's mine he'll put on my side of the bed like on it, so I have to move it before getting to lay down. This is annoying for a couple of reasons. One, he's literally taking the time to take his stuff off the bed. We're not the neatest of people, he's just piling it in a corner. So he could plop my stuff there too. Two, when I clean off the bed, I take everything off because I recognize that we both will be getting into bed eventually. Three, when I come to bed super late, it's because I'm ready to fall asleep not suddenly have to clean up stuff and I use that mindset when clearing the bed and taking his stuff off. So the petty revenge if he couldn't see where this is going, tonight I'm going to bed first. And he has a ton of clothes folded across the bed. None were mine, so I just put them on his side, turned out the lights, and I'm going to bed once I make a stupid reddit post. I doubt anything worthy of an update will happen and I don't expect it to suddenly cause him to clear off the bed completely. But I feel petty tonight, so yeah. He can see how it feels to be tired and ready to fall on the mattress, and I have to pick up stuff first. Update. I honestly don't know if I should laugh or pull my hair out. The universe just played a huge, ha ha, screw your petty butt card. I'm laying in bed, lights are off, I'm starting to doze off, and my husband comes in to ask when I'm taking the dog out. Why is he asking? because we take turns every other night taking her out because we don't have a yard and bicker about who will do it if we don't fairly alternate it. And because he came into the room to ask about it, he saw the clothes and just put them in the corner I mentioned. No issue. Oh, and to top it off, he freaking offered to walk the dog since I was already in bed and almost asleep. I'm not petty often, I'm really not, and the one night I decide to be petty, it fails horribly. He actually missed a binder near his pillow and I feel bad enough to go ahead and move it for him. What the heck universe? What the heck? You gotta love that you gotta buckle down and finally go for that petty revenge and the moment you do, 
They end up being like a sweetheart, silently moving the stuff off, saying, don't worry, I'll take out the dog tonight, and just making you feel like a little bit of a jerk for trying to get some, honestly, I think fair petty revenge. I don't think OP should let this one go, and the next time it happens, just keep it up and see if they complain about it. Or maybe you end up in a loop where only you're getting upset about moving the stuff. This next story is from M4 Taylor. We are brothers. So when I grew up, I had about five other siblings in different ages, and I was a half-brother to all of them. Anyway, my oldest brother hated me growing up, mostly because everyone kept saying I was an identical copy of our dad, someone brother and I looked up to. He bullied me pretty hard, stole my Lego sets, broke buildings and cars and so on when I was a wee kid. When I got older, I was told by mutual acquaintances he had spread the rumor I was gay. And such rumors at the school. This was the mid-90s, not even near the tolerance we have now. I had the fortune of a closer-aged brother who looked out for me, but since he was two years older, the last few years, every school term was like a living heck. Anyway, our dad died and we had a falling out that was pretty harsh. We ended up fighting after the funeral, after our aunt said I'd be keeping the memory alive, and my brother flipped out. I'm no saint, but I try not to fight that much or cause people to fly off their handles and try to downplay what she said like I did most of my life. So we didn't speak for years. I got a notification a month or so ago about him having some financial issues and calling our other siblings for help and advice, not asking for money but nearly there. So I did what any good little brother would, I sent him what would be about $5,000 and a note stating, no matter what, we are brothers. If you send this back, I'll send double. Knowing my prideful brother, not ever wanting any help or money, I know how much that would either piss him off or he'd be thankful enough to leave me alone. I'm told he told our sister about it, asking what my plan was and she replied, that's just our little brother. I don't plan to ask for anything back or an apology or anything, it's just knowing that despite anything, we are brothers and the fact that he's gonna hate it and won't be able to act on it that gives me a satisfaction on this revenge. And I'm pretty sure my other siblings know I'm spite donating, but considering they know our history, they don't care. I also know being more well off than him, thankfully with a working wife and proper and safe job, is something that grinds his gears. Not the best revenge or conventional, but meh, it's something that isn't illegal or punching someone a head taller than me. This is definitely a really interesting form of petty revenge. There's like multiple layers of satisfaction that OP really can get out of this, which is knowing that I'm sure that amount of money is really going to be helping their sibling, so you just kind of feel a little bit better knowing you help them, you know, get back on their feet, but also knowing that there is no way, despite them being nasty to you for years, that they can say anything that they'd really want to say to you, because what leg do they have to stand on in saying anything like that when you just gave them $5,000? In a weird way, it's like satisfying for OP that it might eat away at the brother a bit. Maybe it'll make the brother realize they were a jerk for acting the way they did to OP for all those years. Our next story is from Friggin' Way. Enjoy that CDRW. Early 2000s, I worked as customer service for Dell. I helped customers correct any issues after they had just received their new computer. Missing monitor, wrong upgrade, broken and need replacement, refund charges, etc. This was also during the time that Dell was switching from beige computers to black computers. Important for later, guy calls in one day and says that the new computer he received is not what he ordered through his salesperson. I pull up his account and instantly I can see he's lying and knew this was going to be a fun call. You see, when ordering from Dell, you either ordered through a salesperson or on the website, and the system can tell us which you ordered from. He ordered through the website. Doing my best to not call him a liar straight out of the gate, I say, Sir, I actually see you placed your order through our website. However, what seems to be the issue with your computer? I ordered a CDRW, but I only got a CD-ROM drive. You need to send me out a CDRW, and I'm not paying anything extra. I checked his online order, and sure enough, he had selected CD-ROM. Now, being an online order, what you select to order is what you're charged and receive. If I remember correctly, the difference between CD-ROM drives and CD-RW at the time was like 50 bucks. Nothing huge, but still. 
We used to have some issues with salespeople where they would tell customers they're getting better components but only order and charge the lower end parts just to make a sale and get that commission. This makes the customer think they got a great deal on a new computer only later to realize it's not as great a deal as they thought. Times like those, I'd be more than willing to sound out a free CDRW upgrade to smooth over the problems and keep the customer happy. But he placed his order online. He'll get no love from me today. I'm sorry sir, since you placed your order online and you chose the CD-ROM, I would have to charge you for the CDRW. They say no, I ordered and paid for the CDRW, you will send me the CDRW. At this point, I could have argued back and forth with him, at which point he'd probably ask for my manager, and of course my manager would give in and just give him the CDRW, but my shift was ending in a few minutes, and I needed this call done. Looking at his order, I see that he'd ordered the newer black computer. I then pull up my list of computer parts and order him a beige CDRW. Okay sir, I've ordered your replacement CDRW at no cost. It'll arrive in 3-5 to five days, and you'll need to send the old CD-ROM back. Thank you for choosing Dell. This is kind of a fun hypothetical to think about for your position. If you were this customer, and let's say you actually did get screwed over on the CDRW drive, if you called up and complained and got a free one sent out to you, but it ended up being the wrong color, it didn't match the case of your computer, would that upset you to no end? Let me know in the comments down below. And our final story of the day is by Pine Trees 1990 stopped my ex-boss from getting a promotion. So I'd worked really hard to get a job I loved and I was great at and paid decent. My team loved me and everything was going great. I made the stupid decision to change departments. It was the same job, but this department paid 5% more. I went to my first meeting in the new job and knew I had made a mistake. The operations manager made someone cry. There were only five of us in the meeting, and he was picking on a junior manager who had made a small mistake on the wording and a presentation he was doing. The rest of the team was great. While I was there, I was the lead for a big project that lasted for two years. I managed everything and was the go-to person. On the final meeting with the director, my boss took over and took credit for all my hard work. So I left the department and started to work somewhere else in the same company. About six months later, boss rings me in a panic and explains he has a big interview but can't find the project pack. I say I'll send it across. I dig out the pack but put in a roles and responsibilities page before I send it across. I had my name as lead on pretty much everything. I get a call later on from an old coworker who said boss had gone to his interview, explained he ran this project did X, Y, and Z, and then went to go through the pack which had the responsibilities and he looked like an idiot, which rattled him and impacted the rest of his interview. Boss was fuming, but my coworker had backed me up. Boss didn't end up getting the promotion, and I like to think I played a small part of that. I don't see how you can feel bad in any way for a guy like this, who went and made a fool of himself in an interview trying to fluff himself up, trying to make him look way more important and smart and bright and a leader, all the while just trying to bite off the work OP did. Good on OP for not letting them get away with that. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to see another revenge story that was even more insane than the ones in this video, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, click on the right. But with that said, I'll see you guys next time with some more stories.